Okay, welcome everybody. What I want you to do is please write down these problems. Um, go ahead and give some time. See if you can follow the steps I gave you. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll show you the answers. All right, we ready? Let's give it a shot. So on the first problem, we have f of x equals 6x minus x squared. Um, real quick, if you guys notice, it's not in our standard form. So what we first want to make sure we do is put it in standard form. So Okay. Now for this problem, remember I said if ever you see a negative 1, we've got to make sure we factor it out. Whenever our a is negative or it's larger than 1, we have to factor it out. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1. So now, now that is equals f of x. So now what I need to do is take my b, which is my negative 6, divide it by 2, and then square it. So negative 6 divided by 2 is a negative 3. Negative 3 squared is a 9. So now I have negative 1 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 9. Remember, whenever, remember, whenever we add something to our side of our equation, we also need to make sure we subtract it. So now I can take this. I need to make it as a perfect square. So I say negative 6 divided by 3 gave me a negative. Negative 6 divided by 2, I'm sorry, gave me a negative 3. Well, I can write this as x minus 3. Notice the similarity. x minus 3 will write this. x minus 3 squared will give me that. So I could say f of x equals negative 1 times x minus 3 squared minus 9. Now, my uh, equation is in standard form. So I can say my vertex is equal to a positive 3 comma negative 9. My axis of symmetry is when x is when x equals 3. And then I need to find the zeros. Now, um, to find the zeros, I'm kind of run out of space here. I guess I can maybe say that. Remember, correct the zeros, you just need to have f of x equal to 0. So I could say uh, 6, 6x six minus x squared. Factor out an x, I have 0 equals x times 6 minus x. Then I can set these both equal to 0. So 0 equals x and 6 minus x equals 0. Therefore, my x-intercepts are, when I solve for x here, I get x equals 0 and x equals 6. Done. All right, you can see I'm perfect. For number two, again, let's go ahead and um, fact or uh, use our completing the square. I don't need to factor out a, a negative one or a one because my a is one. So now all I need to do is take negative eight divided by two and square it. Negative eight divided by two is negative four. Remember negative four. Negative four squared is positive 16. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to add my 16 inside my parentheses and then subtract it out. So I have h of x equals x squared minus 8x minus 16. Uh, I'm sorry, that's positive 16, right? Negative 8 divided by negative 4, positive 16, minus 16 plus 12. Now remember I said remember that negative 4, because negative 8 divided by 2 gives you a negative 4. When I write this as a perfect square, notice where that negative 4 looks. x minus 4 squared, and then this is negative 4, okay? Now, the reason why this works, if you guys want to test this, just take x minus 4, square it, and see what you get. And what you'll end up getting is x squared minus 8x plus 16. Now, again, the reason why we do this is so that we can get a perfect square, or we can get a perfect square. Once we know it's a perfect square, we can determine that the vertex is going to be, uh, for this one, will be 4, comma, negative 4. My axis of symmetry is going to be when x is equal to 4, my x value of my vertex. Uh, to find the intercepts, we can set this equal to 0. Now, there's two ways we could do this. Um, I could go ahead and solve this, just say 0 equals this and solve for x, but I've already showed you how to do that. So what I'd like to do also is see, I know this, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking um, this is going to be factorable. So let's go and see if it is. So if I say 0 equals 
x squared minus 8x plus 12. And if I think of what two numbers multiply to give me 12, but then add to give me negative 8. And if I say, well, if I multiply negative 6 times a negative 2, uh, they'll multiply to give me 12, but they'll add up to give me negative 8. So I can factor this problem probably quicker than I'd be able to really solve it. So therefore, now I have x minus 6 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. So therefore, my x-intercepts, x equals 6 and x equals 2. All right? Lastly, let's go into the last one. f of x equals 4x squared plus 8x plus 5. So now we have that number, that crazy number in front that we need to get out, right? So I need to factor out a 4. Now remember, we don't need to factor 4 out of all three terms. We only need to factor it out of the first two terms. So I factor out a 4, and I'm left with x squared plus 2x plus 5. Now, since I've fa oops. Now I factor the 4 out of the first two terms. Now I can complete the square to make this a perfect square. So to complete the square, I'm going to take my b, which is 2, over 1, and square it. So 2 divided by, sorry, b divided by 2. So 2 divided by 2, square 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So therefore, I'm left with 4 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1 plus 5. Make sure if we're going to add 1, we've got to subtract 1. If we add uh, 16, we've got to subtract 16. Okay, It's a very common process with the completing the square. Now, remember that 2 divided by 2 was positive 1, right? Well, what happens when I write this as a perfect square? I get 4 times x plus 1 squared plus 4. Okay, This 4, all it's going to tell me is that's going to be a stretch and compress, but it's just going to also remind me that my graph is opening upwards. It's not going to affect my vertex because my vertex is hk. So the vertex of this problem is going to be a negative 1, comma 4. Okay? Remember, your vertex is the or your standard form is the opposite of h, so your vertex is the opposite of that, which would be h. So if it's a positive one, your vertex is a negative one. My axis of symmetry is going to be is going to be the x value of my vertex. And to um, to solve this, I could look at factoring. Now we could easily go ahead and look at the factors and see, all right, you know, is this factorable or not? Um, but to make this a little bit quicker, we can just solve for our completing the square. So we can say 0 equals 4 times x plus 1 squared plus 4. So if we just solve this equation for x, it would just be the same as factoring or using the quadratic formula. So I'll, I'll subtract my 4. So I get negative 4 equals 4 times x plus 1 squared. Divide by 4. Negative 1 equals x plus 1 squared. Now I'll have to take the square root on both sides. And what you'll notice is I'm taking the square root of a negative number. Therefore, this problem is going to have no real solutions for your x-intercepts. So I'm going to have imaginary roots. Um, so therefore, you're going to say that um, no real roots or no real x-intercepts because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those are three problems. I hope, that, uh, hope my tutorial helped you out. And then uh, just make sure you check out more videos at freemathvideos.com. Thank you.